That day in September has been life-changing. That yeah. day in 1997 is one Edith Brown will never forget. She was getting ready to head out to work as a registered nurse. Yeah. A slight shortness of breath while making the bed that morning wasn't enough to alarm Edith, but what happened on the drive to work was. Two blocks or so from the house, this excruciating pain just starts to swell in my chest. And I grab my chest and my son just kind of screams, Ma, what's wrong? And I don't remember answering him. I just made this big, wide U-turn in the middle of the street and headed back for home. Edith had suffered what nearly a half million women experience each year, a heart attack. At that time, that was the furthest thing from my mind. That's why I thought it could not be happening to me. Edith wasn't alone in thinking that way. In fact, most women view heart disease as a man's disease. But that perception could prove to be deadly. I think a lot of women are thinking that they're going to die of breast cancer, and I think that's the biggest scare out there. But I think what they need to know, that more women are going to die of heart disease and heart attacks than they're going to die of breast cancer. And that prevention is the key to detection of heart disease or stopping it from getting a hold of them in the first place. Early detection of heart disease starts right in the doctor's office. Hi, how are you? Good to see you. Number one, they need to um, tell them their family history, and especially if it involves heart disease or stroke, high blood pressure or high cholesterol, that's what you need to know. Now, did anybody in your family have heart disease? No. Anybody have diabetes? That was one step Edith wishes she had taken more seriously. I did have a family history. Uh, both on my mother and father's side, there was history of heart disease and diabetes and hypertension and stroke. So with um, those two together um, would easily come up with um, a lead to say, maybe we need to check your heart. Once a complete family history is discussed, share with your doctor any symptoms you have that could be related to heart disease, no matter how unusual. The shortness of breath for no reason. Any chest pain that may be unusual. Any um, pain that may be radiating up their neck or down their arm. Um, any nausea or vomiting in association with chest pain or shortness of breath. Profuse sweating when you're doing absolutely nothing but sitting still. Those are classic symptoms that might be missed. And while you can't control some risk factors, such as increasing age, gender, or family history, there are many factors you can control to reduce your risk of heart disease. If you smoke, stop. Women who smoke are at high risk for a heart attack. Control your cholesterol and blood pressure. Stay active. Heart disease is almost twice as likely to develop in inactive people. And watch your weight. Obesity can not only lead to heart disease, but a host of other health problems as well. Those are all things that Edith pays particular attention to now. And she's helping other women to take that message to heart. If I had to have a heart attack to make a contribution, then so be it. If I can prevent or if my heart attack can be an example or be a, um, a marker for women to know signs and symptoms and to follow up with your physician and making sure that you're maintaining uh, proper health, then I'm glad to do that. For Smart Medicine, I'm Rod Starnes. Joining me now is Teresa Dawson, director of the Baptist Heart Institute. Teresa, thanks so much for joining us. Okay. Tell us why women are so at risk for developing heart disease. Kim, I'd like to first say heart disease is an equal opportunity killer, but women are more at risk for dying from heart disease. We know more and more about this every day as the research body grows. We realize that women have risk factors that predispose them to heart disease, but often women are unaware that they are at risk, therefore they delay seeking treatment, often until they experience a catastrophic heart event in their life. Now men have certain 
uh, symptoms for heart disease, but women can have other symptoms. What are those symptoms that women have? Well, women can certainly have those classic symptoms of crushing chest pain, but the thing that we know is more often than not, women will have more subtle, atypical symptoms, often described as a feeling of fullness in their chest, in their throat, out in their arms. Often they complain of fatigue, undue fatigue of unknown reason, unknown cause. They sometimes complain of shortness of breath. Perhaps the most uh, subtle symptom of all that goes unheeded is a sudden change, a new symptom that occurs when you're doing activities that you have done repeatedly, whether that be shortness of breath, fatigue, unusual sweating, just uh, feeling more tired than usual. So anytime there's a new symptom, especially in the che chest, jaw, neck area, we say, you know, see your doctor. Let them say that this is not cardiac and possibly save your life. What's the latest link between hormone replacement therapy and heart disease? The most uh, current information from the American Heart Association is that they no longer recommend hormone replacement therapy as a preventative adjunct for heart disease. Uh, as always, any woman needs to discuss with her health care provider the risk and benefits of hormone replacement. But where we once recommended it as of a possible preventative treatment that's no longer part of American Heart's recommendations. At what age should a woman start asking her doctor about heart disease? I think the thing that we need to stress most is that the risk factors that predispose us to heart disease begin early in our life. So we don't wait until we're at that age that we think we may have it. We begin early to prevent the development of heart disease. Teresa, thanks so much for joining us. Well, thank you for having me today.